Let somebody shout hallelujah. We give glory to Almighty God for bringing us once again into this faith clinic tonight. We want to appreciate the choristers for the wonderful rendition. Go increase your anointing in Jesus' name. Kindly let us pray. Praise his name and lift him high. Praise his name and lift him high. Forever you are the king who reigns in awesome majesty. Praise his name and lift him high. Praise his name and lift him high. Forever you are the king who reigns in awesome majesty. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lord of Hosts, the Mighty One, the Holy One of Israel, the Strength of Israel, our strength, our sufficiency, our all in all. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the adoration. We appreciate your doings in our lives and in your church. You have proved yourself that you are the one who reigns in the affairs of men. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight we are here again. Come and visit us in a new dimension in Jesus' name. Amen. Every situation of our life today, let it have a positive turn around in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you specially for a daddy that you have been using for us and the entire family, let his grace abound in Jesus' name. Amen. Let his strength be renewed in Jesus' name. Amen. Every prayer that is offering for us and for the church of God, Father, answer by fire in the name of Jesus. Amen. And tonight, visit us in a new dimension in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God specially for this great opportunity that they have extended to us to minister on this platform. And we pray that God will keep him for us in Jesus' name. Amen. We also appreciate the opportunity you have uh, with also myself hearing this telecast wherever we are. God will visit you specially today in Jesus' name. Amen. Our topic today is you will rise again. You will rise again. And our text is from Micah chapter 7, verse 8. Micah 7, 8. It says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. The Lord will be a light unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. To rise again is to get up or make progress after a fall or a failure. In Proverbs 24, 16, Proverbs 24, 16, it says, For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. It is not that to fall, that is a problem. But if you fall and remain on the ground, that is where you have a problem. Because that is told us that in boxing, you can fall as many times as the contest continues. So far, you don't remain on the ground. If you remain on the ground, you are knocked out already. In the journey of life, you will not be knocked out in Jesus' name. So as far as you are concerned, as far as I am concerned, as children of God, if we are true children of God, no matter how low we find ourselves, there is an everlasting arm of God that can carry us up, and it will carry you up in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 8. Deuteronomy 26, verse 8 says, And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. This depicts the story of the Israelites. They fell to the 
to the lowest ebb any man can fall because they became slaves to the Egyptian. But God made them to rise again. You will rise again in Jesus' name. Amen. So when we say you will rise again, what does it mean? It means where you are is no conclusion of your life. Job 42, 10 and 12. Job 42, 10 and 12. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. You will end it well in Jesus' name. Your latter end will be greater than the former in Jesus' name. This is the story of Job. A great man, but he fell. The everlasting hand of God made him to rise again. So you are only on the bus stop. You are not yet on your destination. If things can change for Job, it will change for you tonight in Jesus' name. That what to rise again means there is hope for you. Job 14.7. Job 14.7. He said, for there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that their tender branch thereof will not cease. You may lose anything, but don't lose your hope. Hope keep you alive. Hope keep you going. Hope keep you trusting. Hope keep you motiv being motivated. Don't lose hope because you will rise again. And you will rise again also means there is a bright future for you. No matter what the situation now is dictating or what others are saying concerning you, there is a bright future for you. Proverbs 4, 18. Proverbs 4, 18. But the path of the jaws is that the shining light that shine more and more unto the perfect day. The path of the righteous shines unto perfect day. There is a perfect day. And you will not be an exception. This is not your end. There is a future, a better future awaiting you. But let's ask ourselves a question. What are the causes of what makes people to fall or to fail? Number one. Greed and confessiousness. Gaius was on the rise to become a prophet of God after Elisha, but he fell because of greed and confessiousness. In 2 Kings chapter 5, 26 to 27, 2 Kings 5, 26 to 27, Elisha asked him, where have you been? He said, is my heart I'm not going with you? When you follow after Naaman, and when he got down from his chariots, and they begin to give you silver and garment. He said, is this the time for silver? Is it the time for exchange of garment? He said, the leprosy of Naaman will cleave unto you and your seed. He was supposed to be rising to greatness, but he, be, he came down low because he made up his mind in a negative way. He said, I will run after the man to collect silver and garment. The same, people, the same thing people are doing today. They run after money and mortgage their soul. They run after power and position and mortgage their soul. Greed and confectiousness can make you to fall. Number two, pride can also bring a man down. Nebuchadnezzar fell because he dishonored God. In Daniel chapter 4, 30 to 31, Daniel 4, 30 to 31, he was the king of Babylon. Babylon happened to be the greatest nation of their time. So, uh, uh, consequently, he became the greatest king, ruling the whole world of his time. And he said, his hand has made all this, has built all this. And a voice came to him that he will be sentenced into the bush, and his mind, the heart changed to that of animal, and he was sentenced to be like animal for seven years. Because he did, he did not give honor to God. Nothing you have that you did not receive from above. Your success and your achievement. Give glory to God. Because he's the giver of all things. Number three. Affliction and disease can also make man to fall or to fail. 
In Job chapter 1, verse 3, Job 1, verse 3, Job was described as the greatest of all men in the East because of his wealth and honor. But when he was afflicted, he lost everything one day, and he that was the greatest became the lowest. Such an extent that Job 2, 7 to 8, Job 2, 7 to 8, let me just read verse 8 because of the time. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with her, and he sat down among the ashes. The one that was the greatest now sat among the ashes because he was afflicted. I pray by the name that is above every other name, you will not be afflicted in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, famine and disaster can bring someone low. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8, we have the story of a woman called the Shunammite woman. It was a great woman of great wealth, well connected. But suddenly, there was famine coming to the land. And Elijah told her, relocate to another nation because there have been seven years of famine. By the time the famine was over, she came back. She discovered house has gone, farm has gone, all that she had has gone. She has to cry to the king. There are some cases, floor will just take a whole house, the Family will not be able to take a pin. Fire will just consume a whole street. And nobody will be able to take a pin. Disaster can bring man low. If you are in that situation today, you will rise again in Jesus' name. So in 2 Kings chapter 8, 2 to 3, 2 Kings 8, 2 to 3, this woman have to go back to the king to beg the king for restoration of all that he has lost. Maybe you too, you have relocated abroad for many years. Maybe they forced you to come back or voluntarily you came back to the nation and you discover that those you left, they are far away. You don't have to be discouraged because you will rise again. Number five, sin and disobedience can make one to fall. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, 20 to 23, 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23. We have the case of Samuel there. Let me read from verse 22. And Samuel said, And the Lord has great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity of an idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the work of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Rebellion is the root of all sins. And because he disobeyed God, uh, the kingdom was taken away from him. You can't live in disobedience and you continue to rise. It's impossible. He said, can we continue in sin and grace abound? He said, God forbid Every spirit of disobedience may be rooted out today in Jesus' name. Amen. Please let us pray. Say, Father, Father, whatever has caused me to fall, have mercy and forgive me in Jesus' name. Whatever has caused me to fall, have mercy and forgive me in Jesus' name. Whatever has caused me to fall, have mercy and forgive me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say, Father, whatever will not allow me to rise again, or prove it in Jesus' name. Father, whatsoever that will not allow me to rise up again, or prove them in Jesus' name. Whatsoever that will not allow me to rise up again, or prove in my life, in my family, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to rise again? It means to be lifted above past limitations and reproach. We have the story of Bartimaeus, Mark 10, 46 to 52. Bartimaeus was a blind man. They even mentioned the name of his father. According to what daddy taught us, that his father was mentioned means he was born to a noble family. But blindness limited him. And 
make him to be a reproach to others. He was limited in his family. He was limited physically, socially, and spiritually. But after encountering Jesus Christ, he rose above his limitation and reproach. You too will rise above your limitation and reproach in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pray and say, Father, have mercy on me today and do the impossible in my life in Jesus' name. Have mercy on me today and do the impossible in my life in the name of Jesus. Have mercy on me today and do the impossible in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. On that day, everything that caused obstacle to his way of glory was removed. Whatever may have constituted an obstacle to your way of glory, they shall be removed and you will rise again in Jesus' name. Amen. Financially, one can be down. Financially. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7, we have the story of a popular story of that widow who has two sons and inherited debt from the late husband. He cried to the prophet, a prophet Elisha, and he followed the instruction of Elisha borrowing vessel, shutting the door, pouring the oil, and the whole vessel were full. He ran, she ran back to Elijah, Elisha. As soon as she got to Elisha, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 7, 2 Kings 4, 7, then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. He was able to pay her debts, and he was able to live in her burden throughout her life. And the children that were being bandaged, they continue to live freely. Maybe you are owing a huge debt that you don't even know how to pay. Maybe interest is accumulating because of the loan you borrowed, and um, because of this lockdown, there's no way to do the business as usual. By the name that is above every other name, the one who helped this widow to pay her debt, we pay your debt in Jesus' name. Amen. When you go to John chapter 6, beginning to 5, 5, 5 to 9, John 6, 5 to 9, Jesus was not stranded in feeding the 5,000 without counting women and children. He they were in the wilderness. And Jesus said, go and feed the people. And the apostle, the disciple said, we are in the wilderness, no bakery, no bakery here. Not only that, according to the gospel, according to Philip, Philip said, we only have 200 pence. What can that do? But John chapter 6, verse 6 said, himself knew what to do. In your financial mess, Jesus knew what to do. And he will do it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So, then somebody just said, there is a lad here. And what does the lad have? Five loaves and two fishes. I want to assure you by the name that is above every other name. The lad, those who will connect you to your financial breakthrough, they will locate you in Jesus' name. Amen. That small contract that will transport your financial life to a big one, you will locate it in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, in Matthew chapter 17, 26 to 27, Matthew 17, 26 to 27, the tax collectors were not able to ridicule Jesus for lack of fund. They came to Jesus Christ and said, we need to, we need, you need to show us your tax. And Jesus asked from Peter, who's supposed to be pay tax, children or stranger? Peter said, only the strangers, he said, for us not to make them offended. We have to pay. He said, go to the sea. Cast your hook. The first fish that come out, open his mouth, take the money, and pay for you and for myself. I pray for you today. Every financial situation that want to cause you an embarrassment, God will intervene and embarrass that situation in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus was not embarrassed because there was a, 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 a money in the fish mouth. 
All your money that is, all your money, your financial blessing that have been hanging from beginning of this year to date, God will release them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, help me and let my business rise again in Jesus' name. Help me and let my business rise again in Jesus' name. Help me, oh, and let my business rise again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say, Father, grant me divine connection to my breakthrough in Jesus' name. Guide, grant me divine connection to my breakthrough in Jesus' name. Grant me divine connection to my breakthrough in Jesus' name. Emotionally, one can be down, but you will rise again. In 2 Kings chapter 19, 12 to 14, 2 Kings 19, 12 to 14, we have the story of Elijah the great prophet being discouraged. Anyone can be discouraged. Don't let me I mean, deceive ourselves. No matter whom you are, you can be discouraged. But if care is not taken, discouragement can lead to frustration and depression. If Prophet Elijah can be down emotionally, then anyone can be down. But like God spoke to Elijah, he will speak to our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen. He will encourage all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So in, four, in, in, in First Kings chapter 19, 4 to 5, he said he went a day journey further and now came under a juniper tree and was dozing off there. And behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. You will have the touch of God today in Jesus' name. Amen. He will send in you from every discouragement in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pray and say, Father, Amen. destroy every arrow of discouragement and depression today in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, destroy every arrow of discouragement and depression in Jesus' name. Father, destroy every arrow of discouragement and depression in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say, Father, lift me above emotional disorder or stress in Jesus' name. Father, lift me above emotional distress or emotional disorder or, or stress in the name of Jesus. Father, by your mercy, lift me above emotional disorder and distress or stress in Jesus' name. Amen. Spiritually, one can be down. But if you are spiritually down today, you will rise again. Amen. In Mark chapter 5, 1 to 8, Mark 5, 1 to 8, you will know the story of a, of a man of Gadrain. No man could hear, help him. No man could tame him. He was living in the, in the, in the, in the tomb. Chains and fetter means nothing to him. But with all this, he did not die in that situation. He rose again. In Mark 9, 20 to 27, they brought a man that was deaf and dumb unto the disciple of Jesus Christ. They couldn't do anything. And when Jesus came, he asked them what was happening. Then the father of the child said, this boy is dumb and deaf. And sometimes the spirit will, will, will want to tear him apart. It will be foaming. It will be lying on ground, rolling on ground. And Jesus asked, how long has this been in his life? He said from childhood. And the, the, the father of that child, or that man said, cry in tears. He said, Jesus, if you can do anything, please have compassion. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible for he that believe it. I want you to have faith tonight that God will do the impossible in your life. So, Jesus commanded the spirit to get out of him. And the man was like somebody was dead. And in verse 27, Jesus took him up by his hand, lifted him up, and he arose. Deliverance is coming your way today in Jesus' name. Amen. You will rise from every attack and affliction in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, any satanic agent assigned to torment any member of my family be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. Any satanic agent 
assigned to, to, to torment any member of my family. I command you, be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. want you to pray and say, every satanic deposit causing sickness in my body, cut fire now in the name of Jesus. Every satanic deposit causing sickness in my body, causing disease in my body, I command you, catch fire now in the name of Jesus. Every satanic deposit deposited in my system, in my organ, causing me sickness, causing me disease, I command, be consumed by fire of Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can rise from nobody to somebody. Because our topic say you will rise again. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, he raises up the poor out of the doors and lifted the beggar from the dunghill to set them up among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the laws, and he has said the word upon them. Joseph rose from prison and became prime minister. According to Genesis 41, 43 to 44. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bowed the knee, and he made him rule over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up this. Without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. It's not good to be down. The, Joseph had vision that all his family, siblings, will be bowed down for him. He never knew that God is taking him higher than that. After all the problems, uh, <laughs> God fulfilled his purpose. I want to assure you, it does not matter how down you are, either spiritually, physically, financially, you are rising again in Jesus' name. Amen. For the, for the purpose of our time, we, I, will, I will just summarize one story, a true story. I have an, a, a, a stepfather. He was a big man working with shipping company before the civil, civil uh, war came. One way or the other, he found himself in Biafra camp, and uh, he became their spokesperson. By the time the war is over, he borrowed clothes to come to Lagos. As soon as he came, I was still a student then, I have to remove my own clothes for him to be wearing. That's how down he was. He decided to go for seven days fasting and prayer without eating anything, communicating with God, and God turned his situation around. Why am I saying this tonight? I don't know why the Holy Spirit wants me to share it with you. I don't know how down you are. And you are at the point of, of losing hope. You are at the point of saying, enough is enough. Maybe I better call it quit. Don't lose hope. God is in your side. You are going to rise again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Esther became queen in a foreign land. Esther chapter 2 verse 17. Esther 2 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of fasting. And you ask, who is, he? Who is Esther becoming queen? It was an, she was an orphan. The only connection he had was with a gate man. Called Mordecai. He was not a native or indigenous of that nation, but among the virgin, though it was, she was not the only virgin, she was selected and became a queen in a foreign land. Why do you write yourself up? You can rise again. Why do you want to lose hope? You can get to that glory again because the one who is with everlasting harm, is able to carry you above where any man can carry you. And surely he will carry you in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray again? Say, Father, as you lifted Joseph, 
Let me beyond my vision in Jesus' name. As you lifted Joseph, let me beyond my vision in Jesus' name. As you lifted Joseph, let me beyond my vision in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, let me rise and shine for you in Jesus' name. Let me rise and shine for you in Jesus' name. Let me rise and shine for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, as I rise today, don't let me ever fall again. Father, as I rise today, don't let me ever fall again. As I rise today, don't let me ever fall again. Amen. What are the keys to rising again? Number one, you must humble yourself before God. Job twenty-two twenty-nine. Job twenty-two twenty-nine. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say there is lifting up, and it shall save the humble person. When you humble yourself, people may be casted, I mean cast down, but you will be saying there is a lifting, there is a rising. Number two. In every situation, begin to praise God. We have been taught where prayer failed. Praise. Psalm 27, verse 6. Psalm 27, verse 6 says, And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Learn how to praise God. Irrespective of every situation, irrespective of what is passing through you, just learn how to praise God and there will be solution. Paul and Silas, they praise God and God made them to, to rise above the prison and the authority that imprisoned them. You will rise above every prison in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, wait patiently upon the Lord. Wait patiently upon the Lord. Psalm 41 to 2. Psalm 41 to 2. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he climbed unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my gains. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, you have to live in holiness. Holy living. Psalm 92, verse 12. Psalm 92, verse 12. Say, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It shall grow like a cedar in, Lab in Lebanon. It, when you are righteous, definitely, prayer or no prayer, you will flourish. And by the name that is above every other name, you will flourish in Jesus' name. Amen. In conclusion, there is no death too deep that the hand of God cannot reach. And there is no height too far that it cannot carry you. However, sin can limit a man from rising again. When we confess and surrender our life to Jesus, it will definitely reach out for us and lift us up. Are you ready to surrender to him today? Because the word of God is clear. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1, Isaiah 59, verse 1, he said, The Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, neither is he heavy, that he cannot hear. But your iniquity have separated between you and your God, and your sin have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. If you want God to hear you tonight, you have to bow down your head and say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please wash me by your blood. Forgive me all my sins. Answer me today and lift me up. Let me rise above sin and circumstances. If you have done this or you intend to do this, kindly bow down your heads so that we can pray with you. Father Almighty, we thank you for all those that are bound down their head for this prayer. They have decided to come to you tonight. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Amen. By your blood, wash away their sin in Jesus' name. Amen. Register their name in book of life in Jesus' name. Amen. And let them serve you forever in Jesus' name. Amen. And together we shall make heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. If you have followed us in this prayer, please give your names and address and phone number to the phone numbers on the screen 
and they will, we will send it to Daddy, our Father, and the Lord, who will be praying for you, and you'll be receiving miracle on daily basis. Not only that, if you are close or nearer to any redeemed Christian church of God, you can as well give your detail to the pastor. He will get to our daddy, and surely he will be praying for you. Just have to pray two prayers before we go. Are you ready? Say, Father, from today, carry me above failure in Jesus' name. Father, from today, carry me above failure in Jesus' name. Don't let me ever fail. Don't let me ever fall. Carry me above failure in Jesus' name. Amen. Let every limitation stopping my rising be uprooted in Jesus' name. Father, let every limitation stopping my rising physically, stopping my rising spiritually, Stop, stopping my rising financially. Let them be uprooted today in Jesus' name. Let them be uprooted. Every limitation stopping my rising be uprooted today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Kindly let us pray. Heaven bless your name once again. We thank you for your word that you have spoken to us. And we thank you because we know for sure that our daddy is praying for us in this program. We now come before you right now. Whatever problem we have brought in into this program today, let them be terminated in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything in our lives that have been an obstacle to our rising, obstacle to our progress, Father, remove them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every satanic enclave, that has stagnated our lives from moving to our destiny, from moving to your purpose, from moving to the level you expected us to have reached. Let them be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, if there is anyone among us that has sick tonight, every sickness in the body, by the blood of the Lamb, we flood them out in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, by your side we are healed. I command, receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance now in the name of Jesus. Begin to rise above sickness and disease in Jesus' name. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. We thank God for tonight's program. And we need to give our offering to make our 